Hello, my name is Tom Green. I am from Tom's Heritage Baked Goods and Jam. We are here at the historic Elmendorf Inn in the village of Red Hook in Dutchess County, New York. It's been traditional on hard scrabble day for the inn to sell portions of apple pie with ice cream. And that was to raise money for the maintenance of this historic site. But of course we can't do that this year due to the pandemic. So we're going to do a virtual apple pie. Now we have for our ingredients, two and three quarter cups of flour, all purpose flour. We have a half a pound or one cup of diced uh, sweet butter, pinch of salt, and two thirds of a cup of water. And we're going to use a piece of modern technology, which makes it so much easier. We're taking two and three quarter cups of flour, a pinch of salt, which is optional for those who worry about salt intake, and for two six of unsalted butter, portioned in cubes, as you see, and frozen. We will take about 10 pulses to incorporate the butter into the flour. Okay, let's check that. And we need to do it just a little longer. You want this to be the consistency of a uh, meal and pieces, small pieces of butter, as you see here, about pea shape in size. So put that back in there, waste not, want not. And we're taking, starting with two thirds of a cup of cold water, and we're going to add it as we pulse. Then we're going to pulse about another 10 to 15 times until it starts forming a ball. Okay, this is, a, this is a good consistency here. As you can see, things have been incorporating, uh, but it's not homogenous. You don't want that because you need the butter to be able to rise and give your dough all of its flakiness. So this, this is a good consistency here. So what you do is form it. Get all those little bits, those are little bits of butter which are going to add to your desired texture. Okay. So you have two pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom. Okay, take that, wrap it in saran wrap or plastic wrap, put it in the refrigerator for at least half an hour uh, until it is of a consistency that will roll out properly. Okay, after 30, at least 30 minutes, our dough has been in the refrigerator and we will roll out the bottom crust. You want to dust your surface with a little flour, not that much because you don't want to dry out the dough and make it crunchy instead of flaky. Roll it into a nice flat circle. And when you roll it out, you want to turn it a quarter turn each time. The more it stays in the shape of a circle, the easier it will be when we go to put it into the pie tin. When this happens, you want to take a small amount of dough, uh, flour so that it's not as tacky and won't adhere to the rolling pin.
Another important thing is feel it that everything is approximately the same thickness. And you can feel that in your hand as you rub it across. Okay, try to retain a circle. And the easiest way you can put it into the pan is to fold it in half. Set your pan nearby. Put that into the center and then out. And make sure that it's equidistant. You want about at least half an inch overhang from the edge of the uh, pie tin. Soothe it down into the middle. And take the kitchen shears and trim to a uniform size. And this is the edge that's going to be rolled over and crimped for our final product. Okay, that should do it. Now, here we have apples. Now, everybody has a favorite kind of apple. But the most uh, common use uh, in the past has been Hyder Reds or Northern Spies for apple pies. Um, lately, the Granny Smith, which unfortunately is not grown locally here in the Hudson Valley, has become the favorite for apple pies because it's a nice, hard apple that doesn't break down much when you bake it and has a nice, spicy, sharp taste to it. Now, these are very special. These are from the Echo Valley Farm of Mr. Chris Close. And his father planted this tree many, many years ago. And Chris thought, I wonder what those will taste like in an apple pie. And he suggested we use those for this demonstration. Uh, nobody can remember the name of them. And so I checked with Athalia at Montgomery Place Orchards. And her best guess is that they are something called a smokehouse apple. And uh, if anybody knows, she does. She's an encyclopedia for our local heritage apples. So we have, in this case, about five cups of apples. Regular sized apples, you should use like seven to eight. And we have cut them up, as you see. And we're going to add a uh, half a cup of brown sugar and a little bit more of uh, regular gran granulated sugar. And we're using a little bit more than usual because these apples are exceptionally tart. To that, we're going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. This is going to help keep the pie being too liquid when you go to cut it. Um, you might want, depending on your apple, use a little bit more of cornstarch because these apples are very dry, so we don't need that much. I'm going to add about one and a half teaspoons of my secret apple pie spice, which I will tell you is not that complicated. It is cinnamon, nutmeg, and a little bit of cardamom. So there we have our mixture. Okay. We bring back our shell and we put in the apples. We probably aren't going to use all of these that we prepared, but the best way to do this is use your hands. Turns out your hands are about the best instrument and tool that you have in the kitchen to do certain things with. But of course, you always want to make sure that they're clean. And of course, these are. There. Okay, we're ready to do our top crust. We do the same thing, put out some little amount of flour on your workspace. And it's the same procedure of trying to keep it in a um, circle, though this dough has gotten a little soft, but we'll do the best we can here.
Okay, once again, fold in half. Try not to tear it like I just did. To the center with your fold. Okay, then press the top and the bottom crust together. It also helps to put, before you put the top crust on, if you want to take some egg wash that we're going to use to glaze the top onto the bo uh, bottom crust and then put the top crust over it. And then you want to press down, make sure those two adhere to each other well. Also, you want to press in a little bit towards the filling so that it is plenty of space to be able to take the bottom, roll it over. So your bottom and your top crust form what we're going to turn into crimps. start getting a little tacky with the um, dough and unfortunately this dough is a little warmer than it should be to accurately fold over but seal any holes that you come across. Okay now what we want to do is start crimping. Also, keep your flour on your fingers. So you go all the way around until you meet the beginning. Now, we take our egg wash and go over the entire top. Try to make it as even as possible. You're going to have nooks and crannies and hills and dales on the top of this thing, but you want to get it all covered with the egg wash. That's going to give a nice brown, shiny finish to your top. Also, hit the edges. You forgot to put the butter on the inside. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Now, uh, also, if you want to, um, before you put the top on, you can dab a little bit of butter on top of the apples that when that melts, it will give a nice richness to the inside. Some people, I mean, there's all butter crust here, so people who are watching their weight might want, want to do that, but it will add to your experience. Now, when this bakes, of course, it's going to start to puff up, and so we will need to put some vents in this. Simply stick your knife in, make teardrop holes. Okay, there it is, ready for the oven. So you can put this into a 420 degree oven for about 15, 20 minutes. What that will do, that will seize the dough so that it stays in the shape as much as possible. Then lower it to 350 and bake it probably anywhere from 40, 45 minutes uh, for the interior to bake. Now, some people like firm apples on the inside, some people like mushy apples on the inside. So you can detect what condition your apple's in. You can put a skewer in one of these holes and you will, you'll be able to feel um, whether the apples are still firm or to the consistency you like. But remember that once you take this out of the oven, it's going to 
continued debate for about 10, 15 minutes. So take that in consideration about taking it out and hoping that you got the consistency of apples that you like. So through the magic of video, we have our finished product, nice and glazed. So next year, you could come to the Elmendorf on Hard Scrabble Day and enjoy a portion of apple pie with ice cream and your money will go to the restoration and upkeep of this fabulous structure. Happy Hard Scrabble Day!